stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app. It's been called the first postmodern building. Its architect thumbed his nose at modernism's strict rules. Why? What was wrong with them? What? I don't know, it's just that I'm kind of a pervert. <laughs> Modernist buildings had entire walls of windows. But you'd never have a wall with a window in it. Modernists frowned upon frivolous decoration. And this house has the kind of wood elements on it. And he heard modern architect Marcel Breuer say, you should never paint a house green. And so I immediately said, I'm going home and painting that house green. Robert Venturi sparked a big debate with this little house on the edge of Philadelphia, which he designed for his elderly mother. Like her son, Vanna Venturi wasn't afraid to go against the grain. She was this combination of socialist and pacifist. And she refused to send you to public school. That's right, because she was afraid I'd have to pledge allegiance to the flag. In other words, she was an ideal client for a house that would challenge the modernist establishment. She just sort of left it up to me. Robert Venturi's problem with modernists was that they tried to meet the complicated needs of our society with grand schemes and rigid rules. The result, he felt, was bland architecture that people had trouble connecting with. Mies van der Rohe famously declared, less is more. Venturi shot back, less is a bore. He said, why should we be reducing architecture to this pure, simple, minimalist object? But Robert Venturi's manifesto against modernism didn't come easily. For four years, he designed and redesigned the house. He started designing it when we met. I met him in 1960. His future wife and collaborator found he was always disappearing to work on his mom's house. And every now and then I wouldn't see him for about a month and I thought, look, this is a very interesting person. In particular, he labored over the unusually tall chimney, which he says was an obscene gesture directed at the establishment. The chimney was a bit doing this. The completed house looks vaguely familiar, even if you've never seen it before. That's because Venturi borrowed familiar elements that have been used by home builders throughout history. Instead of an abstract modernist box, this house looks like a child's drawing of a house. I think that's a, a nice thing to say, an appropriate thing to say, because I wanted it to be a kind of fundamental, generic. symbolic, generic house. But as you get closer, you discover that what looks like a huge chimney from afar can't possibly be real because it has windows. Through them, you see stairs, not smoke. And what appears to be a gable roof has the real roof hiding behind it, along with the real chimney. So what you're saying is this is really a facade, right? Yes. It's like a... It's very much like a facade. A billboard. It's, it's like a billboard. It's like a billboard, that's right. Walking in the door, you discover the real house behind the billboard. Can you explain to me what, what's going on here? Why? In the living room, an oversized fireplace jockeys for position with a stairway. The stairs at first widen, but then they narrow to squeeze around the real chimney. It's an illogical stair. It, you said it's illogical? It's an illogical stair because it gets wider as you go up. Really, this clashing of things is the emotional center of this building. And then there's this stairway that leads to nowhere. The idea here is that while modernists fought so hard to create order, this house recognizes awkwardness and confusion. It embraces complexity and contradiction. That, by the way, was the title of Venturi's influential book. So Venturi might say it's important for there to be that contradiction, that the building should always come around and surprise you, and that the idea that an architect has the capacity to come up with a perfect ideal form is a flawed idea. And the architecture world took notice. Not long after Vanna Venturi moved in, visitors started showing up on her doorstep by the busload. I think she enjoyed it. <laughs> and she could sit and give a seminar at this table and telling them stories about her son when he was a little boy and all that and other and other. Soon, Mrs. Venturi's little house became a source of inspiration for thousands of architects. 
postmodernism, as it became known, started showing up everywhere from skyscrapers to strip malls. Many real estate developers simply saw it as a cheap and easy way to brand their buildings by slapping historical references on a billboard-like facade. And so just as the world is plastered with examples of bad modern architecture, well, guess what? There are thousands of examples of postmodern architecture that's just as bad. God-awful wedding cake imitation of history made to look quasi-historical or worse, abstracted into some kind of cartoon version of history. I wasn't trying to be postmodern. Starting a movement was never on Robert Venturi's agenda. Don't trust an architect who's trying to start a movement.